All right, you asked for it, and here it is, finally, my Kennedon video. So the basic idea of this came from Isomorphic, who originally made the deck Dragon Crunch. Uh, later on, Gear Cruncher was cut. I like having one Gear Cruncher, but uh, we'll get into that in a minute. So the basic idea is that it's a Skycrag deck revolving around Tribute, using Combustion Cell as the best Tribute enabler by a mile, because it gives you power to activate tribute instead of costing you power. So that's how you play three combustion cells and four merchants to grab one from the market because you basically need cell to win. It's possible to win without combustion cell, but very difficult and generally need an aggressive uh, opener with like Grandin drone and assembly line to force your opponent to block some Grandin later on so you can activate tribute. But once you have the combustion cell down and you've got your little Grandin fueling it, you play stuff like end of hostilities, gear cruncher, and uh, best waifu of fall of origin port. Kenna, Shaman of the Scale. So, even without Tribute, Kenna can like eat an Akaria, but with it she can get back any spell, like a Wisdom for the million for one, math doesn't even go that high, or Infinite Loop with End of Hostilities. If you End of Hostilities a Kenna, you can get back the End of Hostilities, and with Tribute you get back another spell as well, and you just get to keep on going, and your opponent dies in one or two turns because you just have a million, like, 9, 10 flying killer Kennas, and they just instantly die. Uh, the rest of the deck is just devoted around finding these things, the strategize, wisdom, uh, staying alive, the torch perma. Uh, I have one polymorph in here because permafrost is really, really bad against the wave of accelerated evolutions on ladder, and I don't really want to play it, but you need some early cards for flyers. And then uh, Ava, Islands of Lee, just another tribute card and a little bit of flying defense. Definitely the weakest card in the deck, but... I don't know. It, it's been okay, and there's not really any better removal. Like, you may play Obliterate, but that's another clunky, expensive card. And then Jotunheller is here to put away the Strategized or Ixtun Merchant. You generally always put away the body. Uh, then the Snowball can, like, combine a Torch to kill something, like pop an Aegis on Akaria, and then you end up hostilities it, and you get two Akarias. That's just awesome. Uh, and then the market has a bunch of random legendaries. This could be whatever you want, really, but uh, I found that the Mold and Nikova is excellent for when you just need to kill somebody and Flamestoker is excellent against control and Gear Cruncher is excellent against time decks. So the reason to play this deck is in addition to it just being super fun, and I, like I highly recommend it if you have these eight random niche legendaries, is that you just absolutely destroy the time fatty decks and uh, value grinding midrange decks. Like they play a world bear behemoth, like sweet, I'll take two of those. They play uh, like, Sandstorm Titan, like, sweet, I'll eat that up with my Kenna while drawing another spell and playing it. And, like, you just completely embarrass those sort of mid-range decks. Your weakness is, as with every, you know, Granite deck, like, the weakness of Scrappy Hour as well is flying units. So, like, Accelerated Evolution out of TJP is very difficult to beat. Uh, to beat, you basically need to have End of Hostilities or Kenna on turn 5, and uh, hope they don't have the God Draw that kills you on 3 or 4. And then the various Akaria decks, if they have lead-ups to Akaria. Like, if they just play an Akaria on 7 and hit you down to, like, 17 or whatever, like, you can just eat it with Kenna and go on through life, or, like, snowball it, and then get two Akarias, and, like, you can probably beat their Akaria with two Akarias. But if they're playing, like, the Rakano deck uh, that Tabu won the last ETS with, and they're playing, like, Amili into Rizan into Akaria, then, well, you just don't have enough interaction for those giant flyers, and one of them's gonna kill you unless you ramp out a fast gear cruncher and shoot down every single little thing. So, with that uh, sort of out of the way, I will acknowledge that like its matchups are not the best right now, but the deck is super fun, and really, Eternal is about having fun and not just grinding the best deck all the time, at least in my opinion. I I'm a little bit bored of playing only Alessi or Akaria, and I am super into playing Kenna. So let's jump into a few games, uh, sort of show it off, hopefully do some cool things. Um, the deck is very complicated, like, I mess up a ton, so maybe me talking to the Lions can help you out a little bit. And maybe you can help me out a little bit. So let's just queue up and uh, see where the ranked ladder takes us. Oh, and there's also a big patch today. They apparently had some new animations. So I hope that one of my opponents plays a Hailstorm on me. I don't really want to play Hailstorm because I don't think it's very good right now. But uh, hopefully someone plays it against me so I can see that sweet new animation. Also, I hopefully am able to find a game, because uh, apparently we're not in peak time or something. I guess everybody in the... 
uh, what, west of the East Coast in the United States would still be at work right now. It's not yet five here in Wisconsin. And I suppose it's also near the end of the month, so people are probably finishing up their sealed league games. Or maybe my MMR is just too high, but I doubt that since I did nothing but lose for the last three days. I went from like rank 60 ish to rank like 300 ish. <laughs> I didn't check exactly where I was uh, now, but it was the definitely the high, high, high 200s. Uh, all right, here we go. So this does not have a combustion solid or way to find it, so it's a pitch basically. Like the only exception to that rule is if you have like some early interaction, like a torch or permafrost, and then a couple of card draw spells and a couple of power. Like, like it keep like torch, perma, wisdom, strategize, three power or something like that. But uh, I guess I play the Seed of Fury, then the Banner. I draw either a Grenadin or a Sigil. But it's not like I have anything to actually play, anyways. Got a pretty slow hand here. Oh, it's Ocean Man. Ocean Man. All right, Rip Kenna. I was a hundred years from casting that, anyways. So that's fine. Uh, I have enough of both of my factions. Uh, I, I both waystones in this deck, both Granite and Cobalt waystones. You want to get three of each, so that your waystones are turned on. But I already had that, so it didn't matter what I fetched with the Seek. So I'm just kind of in the any card that does anything waiting room, like. I could just run this out as a 4-5 and it'd be fine. Right, but this is much better. Okay. I think I'm going to bottom this Seed of Fury and play this Spark Hatcher. I'll bottom the Seed of Fury because I already have enough influence. I want an undepleted source. I could also bottom this to have all undepleted sources. But I think that the Scout, when I'm digging for very specific things, that being Combustion Cell or Ixtun Merchant, is... Uh, better than like playing this 4-5 or whatever. I just like perma this and attack. And should we even want to perma this? Like it's just a 3-3. Like that's kind of who cares. Save the perma for like a world bear behemoth or something. They're playing big xenon. Varus favor makes it more likely to be big xenon because the smaller xenon lists often only play one or two of those. Torch. Well, that's a solid answer to Ion. In a pinch, I can use it to activate Tribute by torching my own guy. I prefer to not have to dip to that, because I'd rather just torch this guy. But we'll see. Xenon Obelisk. All right, well, Torch just got really bad all of a sudden. Uh, I guess I can block in this and torch it. Yeah, I'm just gonna play this. Then I'm gonna plan to block Torch. See what happens. All right, so that probably gets a Carnosaur. I guess my black Torch plan depended on this dying. It looks like this isn't dying, so <laughs> I don't know what to think anymore. Right, this is gonna be a five-five next turn. Yeah, so I guess I'll leave up the Torch to trade with the Carnosaur. The Carnosaur is going to be a 8-8 eight eight if they have another power. Oh, what's this? Okay. Interesting. Just killing this guy. Sure. I guess I get to finish it off with Torch after all. All right. Ixtun Merchant putting away a uh, Grenadin is most excellent. Uh, I'm probably not going to grab Gear Cruncher since I don't have any Grenadin. Perfrost is actually good against the time decks. All right, so I can get Molot Nakova and cast it off of this Grenadin. Or I can just get Combustion Cell and hope two copies of one of their things is good enough. Two copies of one of their things is a lot less good when they have Obelisk and probably have a Carnosaur coming, which will be an 8-8. So I'm kind of leaning towards just getting Mullet and Nakova here. 
I guess there's a chance this goes poorly if they like Karno my 1-1, one -one, but if they do that, I can just perma the Carnosaur and move on with my life. Okay, so they're not using the Carnosaur here, if that is in fact what they got. No, they got Initiation. What am I talking about? I know they got Initiation. And now they got Sauropods. They just don't have Carnosaur on the market, I'm guessing. Okay, a Dawn Walker. So, attack with both and like copy this thing. Could, mm, yeah, I think I'm just gonna perma this, play this guy. Maybe I should have just gotten Cell. Like, I'm still an extra power off this Molenikova. Oh, block. One of these. Maybe I should have just gotten Gear Cruncher. Well, no, I didn't have this at the time. I don't know. It's just uh, looks bad now, and I'm not sure what to do. <laughs> like maybe I should have just gotten the Cell. It is the most important card. Yeah, and if I should have gotten the Cell. I Two copies of a sauropod or whatever, at least trades with some guys. Alright, well, I'm definitely just gonna eat this. Before it can alt. I take eight, he plays another sauropod, and I've got one more turn of chump blocks. Did not play Sauropod. Um, so I kind of have to copy Sauropod. Attack with this. I doubt that he blocks. But I'm going to have a blocker for this and a blocker for this. Yeah. It's just that uh, End of Facilities is a lot weaker when opponent has Obelisk because my copies aren't going to be able to trade with their copies. Okay. Alright, so I moderately threw with my market decision. Since Molnikova would have just traded with a Carnosaur anyways, I didn't have a way to get it unless I drew another power, two power. But I just don't think it would have ended up mattering there since I didn't draw another payoff for my Kenna died. Alright, this is the sort of hand that we redraw because it doesn't have a cell and it's just very dependent on finding one. She basically just always takes sell with Merchant. That was way too cute. No sell, no victory. No chance. Alright, so this is always this is always depleted. This is only sometimes depleted, so I'm gonna lead on the seek power. Alright, and there's a way to find a cell. And I can probably tuck one of these permafrosts. Some sort of moment list, perhaps? Or maybe just an actual dinosaur deck. Granite Waystone. That will get me a Grenadin. So I'll keep that. Uh, I guess that does mean that I'm skipping my third turn. But I think that's okay. Since my opponent is doing nothing. And I like all the cards in my hand. Like, I guess Moment for Frost is good. They don't have uh, silence or anything. I guess I have Purify. Yeah, and they get the Wisdom and I don't. Dairy Cathane putting in the work. This does delay my uh, Kenna turn by one. Like, I could play this on three, this on four, and then uh, Kenna on five since I do this. But I didn't know that I was going to draw a Garen at the time. So I think I am fine with the line I took there. Right, opponent found undepleted power. So I could... All right, so I'm definitely going to play this. I'm definitely going to play this. But I could sack it and play strategize, but I don't think I'm going to. I am just going to pass the turn. Pay three to give it if you have two more spells. Okay, so if they have a cheap spell... Okay. Wow, that is... Uh, 
over the top. Holy crap. <laughs> All right, so Kenna just gets back a uh, seek power here, which is a little bit weak. But I think just getting the Kenna down while I still have a Grenadine is a lot better than not having a Kenna. They have to deal with it, and I've got plenty of card draw. So the power is actually somewhat useful. I get to kill their guy. Just good on many levels. And if this dies, I'm going to be able to dig five cards deep next turn. All right, that leaves it in play for end hostilities. Well, that is just fine. Or combustion cell. Okay, so I think I lead on wisdom. Okay, there's the end hostilities. Play power. All right, I feel pretty good about this. If they play something scary, I can get it. Otherwise, I'll just get a couple of Kennas. Yeah, all right, this is great. If I find a power so that I could torch, that would be the absolute best. Otherwise, a couple of Kennas is fine. Okay, um, because like I, I have to play this guy, so I'm gonna be at only six power. So actually, I think I am just gonna strategize permafrost this guy and then copy the Kennas next turn. Uh, hopefully, I don't get like rain of frogs or something. I could also just copy Heart of the Vault. That is also a very good line. Alright, so let's play this. Play this. Here. Is copying Heart of the Vault better than copying Kenna? I don't think so. Oh, Purify. Well, shit. I don't have a Grenadine. So the worry about copying a guy that always did will spells, I could just like equivocate in response and brick my end hostilities. So I could just play it a little bit safer and slower. Yeah. Yeah, they have a pause, so an equivocate is likely. Yeah, I should have probably just gone for end hostilities on turn six. It's like it's so hard to play. Just so many options all the time. At least if they have to equivocate my Kenna, I get a random 7 drop. Could get like an Akaria or something. Uh, so what would I put away with my Merchant? I kind of want the Scout. Alright, I'll put away a Grandin token next turn. Excellent. Then for now we just play Spark Hatcher and pass. I don't feel like I'm about to die. Like, if he's gonna, like, play Channel the Tempest on my face, that's extremely non-standard, so I'm not gonna play around it. Oni Cave Diver. Hey, that's a 4-2 for two. I have a Relic. Right, warping a Heart of the Alright, there's my End Hostilities target. Let's make myself a couple Hearts of the Vault. I want to play this for sure. So do I want to sack this? All right, so let's see. Let's get play this, sack it, go up to nine. Uh, end hostilities, the Kenna, then this, and then attack that. Or I could just draw two cards. Actually, the Kenna might be better. Now that he can't equivocate, I think Kenna is better. Um, so I have to, although double hearting that and then torching it is super, super good. Nah, I can do that next turn. Yeah, I'm just going to end hostilities here. Uh, so I need to have two... I need to have one power left over for the torch. So, yeah, I'll, I'll sack this guy. Alright, get a couple of these. Oh, did they draw a zero cost equivocate? Am I just blown out? No, okay. Grab and studies and I strategize just since it's cheaper. 
Kill this. And play this. Maybe they have a hailstorm though. Yeah, I'll stretch hasn't put this away. Let's dig a little deeper. That guy's immune to torch without me needing to blow my torch. I should have done that before I killed her then, just so that opponent didn't get the option to torch in response to the killer. They're probably kicking themselves now, but it was just me who made a sequencing mistake. I can probably just kill him with Kenna next turn, actually. I just play, like, one, two, three spells, I'm up to 11. No. Or they return it to my hand and give me a aerial attendant. All right, well, that's a nice thing to put away. Grab like, Caleb's choice, probably. Jeez, that is over the top. <laughs> uh, guess let's kill this. I think they have a torch as well, but let's get it out of their hand. And also power them down so that my end hostilities against this resolves. Or they just have nothing. doesn't matter at all. I have a card I'm definitely going to put away, so I'll lead with the cheaper card draw spell. I think this game is in garbage time now. If we're being realistic. It could end hostilities this, and I don't think I even want to. Yeah, I'm just going to grab a Caleb's Choice out of the market. So I can play around, like, removal on this or something. I don't know. I'm just fairly certain there's no way I can lose. Yeah, equivocate that, too. Sure, you guys got a million equivocates. I don't even care. I could also bust this permafrost off and smash him. Grinva, all right. It dies its deal, its strength to the enemy player. It's not bad. Moment of creation. Sure thing, pal. Have some nine nines. You can just make a million Grenadin if it comes to that. So Hailstorm does let these get in, so I do need to be sure not to take three damage myself. Let's play around various combinations of things. Alright, so if I end of hostilities plus polymorph, this turns into a uh, 9-10, and I can just kill these down. Yeah, alright. This seems good. Right, another Kenna. <laughs> alright, so I want to play this. Sack this. Copy this. Get that and that. Uh, I could end hostilities again, but I think that's a little overkill. We'll just get big enough to kill these while drawing some cards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> once once we're, you're looping like that, opponent isn't going to be able to come back. All right. So I managed to win despite making some errors. I feel like you're going to just make non-optimal plays every single game with this deck. It's just so hard. There's so many different things you can do. So much card draw, so many tutors. Just a lot of, a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. A lot of like weird Kenna and combustion cell math. <laughs> There's a lot of moving parts, which makes it really fun. Oh, hey, it's Kang Breath. This guy is a ETS player. This is like the ideal hand. Combustion cell, Grenadin, and hostilities Kenna and three power. That's perfect. So, do I want to lead on the drone, or play the drone turn three? I don't know what he's on. Hello? Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to lead on this. I've got another Garandon now. I'm never going to get a Garandon out of this Waystone in any reasonable time frame. So. Alright, some sort of film scar here. Could be possible hailstorm coming. Uh, I'm just gonna play the. Actually, I could just play this. And if I get hailstorm, it's kind of a two for one, but it puts on a bunch of pressure. 
I don't feel I need to get down the cell now, because then he might mark it for removal for it. And, uh... Sure, okay, so he's playing maybe a Haunted Highway? I was gonna say, he might mark it for removal for it, and also I didn't have a... Th I still have a power away from ramping into a thing. Uh, and I still am, but I can do it next turn, so... Let's do this. I think I'd rather save the Grindens. I think I do want to power... I'm just gonna end turn. Although if he has Bandit Queen, then trading would have been better. Right, we're fine. I've got enough replacement Grindins that I think throwing away one is fine. I can't think of a tribute card he would play on turn four. Okay, it's just the Devour. Just trying to get one free damage. You need to play that to hit his power drop. Alright, so I do think this is Haunted Highway then. And, um... What am I trying to say? What's that card's name? Ban uh, Vicious Highwayman is a massive beating. Also, Madness on this to get Cloud Snakes is kind of a beating. <laughs> Gorgon Fanatic, sure. So I'm going to have a bunch of flying blockers for that. Just kidding. Wait, he sacked it. All right, well, I am going to have a bunch of flying blockers for it then. I'll just grab Primal to change the color of my totem. That's very important. Uh, nothing to end of hostilities here, so I'm just gonna run out a couple of Cloud Snake Hatchlings. Also, Sack of Granite to play Assembly Line, which seems good to me. Yeah. I'm not gonna have time to play that Assembly Line since I'm spending my next two turns tapping out for these cards. So I might as well get two extra Ganon out right now. Could also trade this off, but because of Bandit Queen. But oh, geez, they have two torches and a Haunting Scream. Wow. All right. It was obviously had the scream when he combusted the Gorgon Fanatic, but Devil Torch is pretty good. Now he gets to refill his hand. Man, oh man. That was actually kind of ridiculous. I don't have any good spells to get with Kenny yet, so I'm just going to Wisdom here. Alright, Ixton Merchant is very good. Do I want to play this power? I think I will. Alright, let's attack with a couple Grand Inns. Sure. Let's make a Bandit Queen less devastating. Play this. I could sack a guy for Merchant, but, like, I don't think that grabbing the uh, Gear Cruncher is any good here. Mole and Nikova is good, though, actually. Maybe I should have gotten Mole and Nikova. Yeah, alright. So this hand is full as hell forever. So I'm going to get Madness Combo. Yep, alright. I might have just died to that Double Torch Scream turn. Wow. That was very, very good. Yeah, I guess I'll just grab Molinikova. At least it like takes two answers to kill. It's keeping one around. I wonder why. Does have a combust in hand? No idea. Yeah, I probably should have grabbed this last turn so I could play it this turn. Take multiple madnesses and combusts to deal with. He's only played one and he drew six extra cards. Probably gonna draw another three here if he wants to. Yeah, if they hit once with Fnatic, you're generally in bad shape. But then if they had a dark return to do it again, he probably about five percent to win. Like the board looks fine, but I'm just gonna get Highwayman, Chamber of Fury, like fly flown over, madness comboed. He just has a full hand. We'll just block that. Although I guess I could blow it up with the Mole and Nikova Spark. Okay. Um, 
do I try to spark this by attacking with everything? Can I gear cruncher? Nah, I'm just gonna do this. Play this. He's gonna like madness that and make me take eight. Oh, he didn't have a torch. Did have another power. Eh, maybe he floods out. Maybe there's still a chance. Slim though it is. I mean, five cards is a lot though. The cannon doesn't even count as a flying blocker because I don't have a torch or anything, so playing that does nothing. Permafrost is just fine. And Kriva? <laughs> what the heck? Okay. Oh, maybe Gear Cruncher is good. <laughs> Shit. Um... I can just end the facilities and get two more of these. That seems like my best line of play. I don't even need to sack this either. I can just attack with it. Sure. And get rid of one of his guys. And then next turn I can sack this one to play Kenna or Gear Cruncher. Really wish I had drawn a torch this game. Yeah, he is just flooding out. Alright. There's definitely a chance. Also, what the heck is up with Kriva? I mean, I guess like Kang has this uh, compulsive thing where he is physically unable to craft cards for fear that he might open it again. So maybe he just doesn't have uh, like four hiding men or something. Okay, so I really want to get this back to get End Hostilities... But I cannot hold up Torch if I do that. But I already have two blockers. So, it's probably fine. That, yeah, let's kill her with this guy. End turn. Since next turn I can just copy this and double, double burn everything down. Uh, so, let's see, Torch Face, I get to deal 8, 16, 23, 26, 30, 34. Yes, this is lethal. Spark him up, blow him out. Alright. Feels good to do that. I'd love Sparking Mole in Nikova. It's like, it's such a fun card. <laughs> I even use the Mole in Nikova avatar. <laughs> All right, I think I'll play one more game. These games are kind of long. I don't want the video to run super long because I don't think anyone wants to watch a like hour long video. But 40 minutes is probably fine. Okay, so this has a cell, but it only has two power. But I'm on the draw and it's got a million grand in. I'm just gonna keep. This is pretty risky since I don't have triple primal and I only have two power, but there are many ways that this hand could go super great. Like I draw two power in a row, for instance. Cause it just has like the first part of the equation, grand in plus sell. I just need to pay off in a power. And I have plenty of both of those in my deck. Is this uh, TJP Wonderbread Deluxe? Do we get a game versus that in? No, it is maybe Unitless? I have not played the Unitless matchup enough to know if it is good or bad. But I assume that it's probably fine since Unitless isn't good against anything. Like, you can Hailstorm me and I'll just like hard cast my cards. Huru Pacifier, alright. That indicates to me that I have no earthly clue what is going on at all. But that's better than Hailstorm. Like, 
I'll take three damage or whatever. That's fine. I need to cast this Ava next turn. That forces out some answer, and then I get to cast Kenna as soon as I find another Primal Source, because that'll be my fifth power. Oh, does that fail storm? Okay. Right, I drew another Grenadin, so we'll find here. So I'll sacrifice that, get these, and I'll just play one right here. I wonder if they're playing Harsh Rule in Huru Pacifier. Probably. They're probably playing like the big JPS fire stack with like Macdo and Black Side Harbinger and stuff. But Kenan does gobble up all of those. So if I can just find one more Primal Source. Come on, deck. Yep, there's no way that was living. Still got some little one twos as consolation. All right, there's the prime. Excellent. And I think I will play this one just because it doesn't die to Hailstorm. And there's still the other Cloud Snake out there. Probably gonna like chump some Macdos or Black Sea Harbingers with these. Man, so much card draw over there. Wisdom, Strategize. But I'm not gonna run out of cards either. Got this Kenna. Oh, jeez, I only have Seek Power to grab with it, though. Uh, maybe I should have played this assembly line. Maybe I'll just do that now. Well, then Harsh Rule is a very cruel mistress. Yeah, I'm gonna wait a turn, actually. Being able to Kenna a better thing than a stupid 3-4. And if they Harsh Rule, they already slayed the Ava, so these are like, whatever. So basically, like, Harsh Rule and... Who pacifier traded for assembly line and half a spark catcher? I'm fine with that. So I'm not gonna permafrost this. If they want a harsh rule or hailstorm this, more power to them. At least I can get back my assembly line. Alright, sheltering rider is completely okay. Uh, so I could torch that so that I can attack. Yeah, that's not that important. Let's just play Kenna. Grab the assembly line. And, yeah, I think I will kill this guy. It's just bigger and I get to attack for a bunch of damage. I get in for six if I do that. I think damage is good even with my deck that kind of goes over the top. Also force them to maybe block and like trigger spark tr trigger tribute for me. Although I have combustion cell, so the, the tribute trigger doesn't matter too much. I just went like a harsh rule feeding time, right? <laughs> Can't attack now. Okay, so if I perma this, I get in for six. All right, so now if they play a blocker, they are dead to the torch. So, yeah, I'm just gonna end turn here. We gotta play like a harsh rule. Yeah, and that's fine. Trade like portions of my cards for, for their card. <laughs> Slaying a 1-1. One -one. They really don't want me to have tribute, but they know I have this assembly line, so... It doesn't really shut off anything. I'm not gonna run this out. Uh, these already threaten lethal, even against the blocker. Uh, they have to sweep this, and then if I draw another power, I can use the drone as a ritual to cast Kenna. <laughs> Channel the Tempesting, a Garen drone. That seems like a desperation play of someone who is about to lose. Alright, and we went at the torch, but I'm just gonna run up the score a little bit. <laughs> Copy a couple of Grenadin drones. If the game wasn't over this turn, I wouldn't have done that. It would have been better to save for Kenna, even though I don't, like, draw a card by warping it. But yeah, alright. Those are some fun games. I think it demonstrated some of the stuff we can do. You got to see the Kenna loop, got to see me grind somebody out, got to see me lose to misplays. It was really the whole gamut of, uh, of... Canadian games in that set there. So 
yeah, super highly recommend this deck. It's my favorite deck uh, of the Fall of Arch Porter meta now so far. It's just super fun. Uh, there is, what, like 12 legendaries, but like this Gear Cruncher in the main isn't necessary. Uh, and just like have Gear Cruncher or Stoker in the market, you don't need this. Like you really just need nine, like four Kenna, four End, and then one other Fatso in the market to, to grab. Uh, so it's not budget, but it's not prohibitively expensive. Like it's not uh, 20 legendary mono time, whatever. So, I've been Lights Out Ace. Subscribe to me, follow me on Twitter and stuff, the standard shills, and uh, have a wonderful day. Peace.